tonight, but that is because we're just trying to work ahead with this new system. Um, so tonight, uh, it, although that there are members of our uh, cabinet that are joining us online tonight, and I'd just like to point out that um, you cannot be taken as present at this meeting. This is for our cabinet members, unless you're physically here. Um, those of you attending virtually will not be able to move a motion or amend or vote on an item. This is government legislation because they still think we should be meeting um, uh, in person. Only physically present members are able to vote on the item. And as is usual, you must exercise their judgment and discretion by voting. And I have the ability to invite any councillor to speak at the meeting, which I will be doing. Um, or indeed, those attending virtually can request permission. So if you wish to speak um, on an item, then please could you make it known? And I'm sure Sarah here will be keeping an eye on hands up or whatever in indications. So, um, without further ado, welcome everybody, welcome members of the public, very nice to see that you're all well anyway, <laughs> which is good. Um, and to those members that have hobbled in um, and got here for this meeting, and our best wishes to those that are at home um, because you are suffering poorly. So, um, without further ado, we move on to item one, which is the minutes of the previous meeting, is does anyone have any um, corrections or any comments on those minutes? Could somebody please approve their recruit, Councillor Jones Evans? Seconded, Councillor, right, okay, um, Ian Stevens, so I will sign. Sorry, there's quite a few pages and I've got a long signature. Sarah. So again, I um, remind people that when you are speaking, if you can speak clearly into the microphone, try not to look that way too much like I just was, because it actually um, takes away the volume and the people uh, listening on but can't hear. So item number two is declarations of interest. Cabinet members, does anyone have any declarations of interests? <coughs> nope. Okay, no declarations. So we move on to item three on the agenda, which is public question times. So, uh, so it's 15 minutes for all questions. Are there any members of the public wish to ask a question? Kathy. Hi, thanks very much indeed. Um, short notice, I hope everybody stays well from this point onwards. Um, the document before you on ride interchange is, um, it has been based on uh, some very controversial uh, elements and I'd like to question how it meets environmental policy if the design itself is increasing the use of car traffic going to ride pier that's my question one and has the scheme now had the approval of any independent safety auditor before it goes before you this evening that's my second question if I've got time and thirdly if it's if it is to protect the environment and the public health how can portaloos on the western garden replace the most used public toilet block on the Isle of Wight based on your own Isle of Wight council 2012 statistics of public use of toilet facilities thank you Uh, Chair, would you like me to comment on that? We can do, we can provide a written response, but uh, uh, let's briefly go through the three the three questions. Uh, I'm not aware, Chair, of the scheme attempting to increase traffic to the pier. In fact, the opposite is true. Uh, the idea is to reduce traffic, which is why uh, uh, increased pedestrian and cycleways up the pier are being proposed. Um, moving the road is not a, um, an, a, an attempt to encourage more people to use it. And I would say that the volume of traffic is based upon White Link's operational decisions more than where we cite the road. Uh, question two was about public health, wasn't it? Yeah. 
uh, the environmental, the safety audit chair is uh, being carried out. Uh, one second, it's been carried out right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the, the safety audit is being carried out uh, at this moment in time, right this second, but it's in, it's in process. Third one was public health about uh, toilets. Meets environmental are, policy. Well, well, you know, it, it, um, the toilet block is going. Um, the Toilets in the station are being upgraded with full accessibility. Um, the I don't believe the work is due to start till the spring. I think March, April. Um, in any event, to, uh, additional toilets are being provided as as additional toilets. Uh, they're not there forever. They're there to provide people who uh, may need to use toilets in the locality to use toilets in the locality. Um, Eventually, the toilets will be in the station. Uh, so this is a period between the two. Um, Can I, I just ask my freedom of... How are we going to make an omelette if we don't break a few eggs? I don't understand. The cost of the eggs is going to be astronomical. Twin, um, £10 million is extremely expensive omelette. My freedom of information request to the council showed that the Isle of Wight Council had no information from the train company about refurbishing toilets in any detail other than the initial line in 2018 that was produced within the Portsmouth City Council document. That was a freedom of information result. And is there a question? that is a fact. There is, how can you be confident that you have got legal cover for decisions that are going to spend money when you have no safety audit for this project and you're making a decision tonight? Chair, we're, we're making a decision uh, in part to approve the scheme as we know it plus all of the amendments that have come about and been brought about after the public consultation uh, and where possible they've, they've been incorporated into the scheme. Uh, the safety audit is being carried out. We are also approving uh, our management and staff management of the project to make the decisions that finalise the scheme. When the safety audit is done, uh, we, we will know further. Okay, are there any further oral questions, please? Oh, hang on. Turn that on. There you go. Oh, yes, very nice. Uh, Andy Fuchs, Island Surveys. I surveyed um, the pier for the cycleway and the new pedestrian way. Um, and I've also done a lot of work for the council. <clears throat> My and I also put a question, and I wanted to put a question at the last uh, executive, but uh, we were out of time. So I emailed it to every single one of you. I hope uh, you have that, but I have no, had no response at all. So I would like to say, just to reiterate what my question was, that number one, I hope all of you are aware that it's an offence in public duty to knowingly damage the public interest with public money. Mr. Jordan, um, the height of the proposed walkway uh, chair, will put children chair, and chair, disabled chair, users chair, at the exact. I, I, I would like you to prevent the question personalising this issue. This is not a personal issue. This is a cabinet decision, and it is not me individually that is making this decision. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to make that very clear, Chair. <laughs> and what's the question, right. Mr. Folks? Is the council aware that the height of the proposed walkway will put children and disabled users at the exact same height as the car exhaust fumes in the prevailing southwest breeze, and that it will be unusable in a northeast wind producing a one meter swell at high tide? Also, your cabinet report section 20H states that the pedestrian access to this historic pier is retained and whilst pedestrians and cyclists will have the option to use the segregated routes on the reinstated tramway pier, they will not be excluded from the historic pier. Well, my question is, how are they going to use this very dangerous new walkway and pedestrian way when there are no plans for access or egress? At the moment, it stops at a brick wall. And there is no plan that anyone has seen that shows how pedestrians and cyclists are going to get on and off this 
a 1.5 million pound white elephant. Question. Thank you, Chair. There's a written response, which I think we ought to provide because there's some technical detail in here that I'm actually struggling to understand. Uh, meters CD, uh, HAD, uh, 5.6 CD, 6.65 meter CD, all to do with wave height. I think, I think, Chair, it would be best. But if I could just uh, add to this, so I would add that, that if there was a, a further question in there, that plans uh, to have access to the pedestrian part of the pier through the station. They are draft. Southwestern trains have been behind the, uh, the, the curve in this whole project, but they are, I have seen draft plans very recently that show access through the station. They show uh, two large retail units and they show the refurbished toilet uh, uh, premises on, on the station. They're draft at the moment, but they will be brought forward in some way or other uh, along those lines. So the, the access, it, the answer is very simple. The access onto the centre of the pier will be via the station, not a brick wall, of course. And we'll give a, oh, he's gone. Um, Andy, we'll, we'll send this to you so that you get that actual, so that you can have a look at the better detail. Thank you. I could just say that it's all very well, but Mr. Jordan has told us facts that he thought were facts before, i.e. with the safety audit, and it was found out that he was telling complete lies. So how can we trust him? Are there any other oral questions? Thank you. And you are? Hello, my name's Desmond White. I'm the chairman, chairman of the Isle of Wight Taxi Proprietors Association. Um, obviously, we're here quite concerned with the Southern Vectors wish list proposals going in. Their main ones being, the question is, their proposals are to utilise Church Lytton and or South Street. South Street the only places they can put buses are directly on our taxi ranks. I'm asked the question is, number one, where do we go? Because there's nothing anywhere at all. Been, we've had no consultation whatsoever. Number two, the bus lanes they're proposing to use, as we are meant to be part of the integrated transport system, Southern Vectors proposals are directly for bus lane only. We should be part of this. We are. Uh, an organisation that's been recognised by the council, yet we have had no consultation. I want to know why, because we found out via what's going on literally by social media. So if I could uh, have possibly some answers to the questions, that would be great. Thank you. Des, it, it, the, I mean, we are just going into a consultation phase. The, I think some of the stuff that came off of uh, Southern Vectors were just um, wish list, it's not necessarily, and we all know how much we valued the taxi drivers, particularly I know you're absolutely excellent when we got missing people. So you will be, um, I'll let Phil come in um, because you, there's no way that you will be ignored. Phil. Thank you for that, Chair, for that clarity. Absolutely. Um, the, the, uh, the bus uh, service improvement plan was uh, a government scheme from the National Bus Strategy that we have uh, been asked to adopt. I use the word lightly asked. Um, absolutely value what, what you deliver for us on in our community. You very much be part of any consultation we do. Uh, and I would say that, and, and I have said publicly also that the and it is a wish list that Southern Vectors have, have given us. It's it's no more than that. We asked them what they thought for buses would improve their service delivery. And they gave us a list. We haven't even opened the, 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 uh, uh, the file yet and on discussions with Southern Vectors about whether we could deliver any, some, all or none of those wish lists. It's, it's just a list that they've given us and part of this. It, we're part of a uh, start of the process that will lead us on to an enhanced partnership plan next year, next March. That's already laid out, uh, not, not the plan, the time frame. Uh, and you'll very, very, very much be part of the consultation process that we will need to go through. And this is a long term stress. This is uh, probably for delivery in two to three years time. 
Absolutely, and, th and thanks for the work you do do for us. Not a problem. It's just to say, it's been a bit worrying because I've seen some of the agenda stuff, and obviously in March, obviously they're looking at taking away some of the on-street parking already coming in from Cowes into Newport, etc. And obviously reading through, obviously Carvel Lane in Cowes has been a taxi rank for many, many years, and Southern Vectors are complaining about the turning circle, which they've never complained before about it. But obviously, with, especially with Newport and obviously with ride interchange, that is having a direct effect on the taxi trade. I mean, obviously, we doing this, trying to find information has been very difficult, but we're starting to get through. But we really are here today to say, well, we want to be part of the mailing list and we do want our voices heard because we work our asses off a lot of the time, day and night. When we've had an incident in the past where a taxi driver was murdered, I had the police on the phone directly saying, you are working at nights, aren't you? Because we don't want our crime and disorder go up. But obviously, that's another story, but we want to be at the table to view our, and hear what's going on. And you absolutely will be, Des, yeah. for sure. Um, you can come to our very long meetings uh, to, to have your say, for sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, are there any other public questions? No? OK. Moving on to written questions. No, no written questions. OK. Is there? Jeff's comes at the end. OK. OK, no other written questions. The. It, it, it says the same um, for the it's, the it's all about the taxi. Um, why are you keeping pursuit of transport partnerships? I'd like your views on the community. Did you know the Isle of Wight Council have an enhanced partnership with Southern Vectors? So what we do is there's rather a lot of these. We won't get through them all, but we will because we'll respond back to you. All right? Because we've only just received those, so it's a bit it's a bit late notice for us to get all the responses up to you. All right? As I said, this was going to be a little bit strange tonight, and I tell you what, I'm really, I'm really struggling to try and keep up with it all because it is very different format. Okay, so we move on to item um, number four on the agenda, the chairman's announcements. Um, well, I just thank all of those that are sitting through in, uh, the duration and the taxi guys that have come here to have their say. Uh, and all those that have, that have come in that are, um, that are trying to stay well. So thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item five on the agenda, which is the Isle of Wight corporate plan. So I'm just going to, there we go. I'm just going to speak to the corporate plan. This will bore you boys, I'm sure, but... Anyway, this is the Alliance corporate plan, which sets out how we wish to take the council forward over the next four years. Apparently, we have to have one of these. The plan is important as it sets out a way forward for the council. It sets out a new direction for the council. We are aiming to get away from the process of managing decline by an ongoing process of cuts that have been the approach now for far too many years. It is really not going to be easy to change that approach as, unfortunately, in recent years, it seems to have become ingrained in the way many things are done. However, it must change. We know it must change, and that is what we aim to do. The plan sets out aspirations and aims for each of the council's portfolios, that's the cabinet members and what they have to do, so as to bring that change of direction into effect across the board. In addition, we have set out three key areas of action reflecting the key issues faced by islanders at the moment. Some of these, the, these three are the need for mental, physical and economic recovery out of COVID. The need to respond to climate change and enhance our status as a UNESCO biosphere. And perhaps very pressingly, 
the need to deal with the housing crisis we're in and secure affordable properties for our residents to rent or purchase to live in. We aim to pursue these areas by working with our local communities, residents and businesses like taxi drivers. To help us listen, we will ensure that we open up opportunities for the public to tell us what they think and to contribute to the work we need to do. We want to make sure that the knowledge and skills that exist within our community can be actively brought into the process of improvement. In the plan, you will find 50 aims that form the basis of the new direction we want to drive the council and the island in. Some of these aims include reviewing and, where necessary, changing how the council is run, focusing investment activities on the island, supporting the restoration of mental health services, ensuring all council decisions have regard to the impact on future generations, improving our planning system, actively pursuing a government imposed public service obligation on cross solent services. The plan is very much a result of collaboration and discussion amongst members of the Alliance who have brought forward ideas, suggestions and proposals which, we, which have been discussed before and since the May elections with residents who want to see something new from their council. As a result, the document has been created is an example of how people can work together to generate a detailed plan of aims and aspirations when they have the unified aim of supporting the interest of the islands, its residents and businesses. The Alliance administration is, of course, made up of independents, Greens and others who elected, like me in May, on the basis of promises to represent the islands in their ward. So, to support our businesses, we will aim to maintain and improve education to support our human capital, to improve our transport systems and infrastructure and work to achieve, achieve true regeneration including support for our high streets and visitor economy. To support our environment, we will take back control of planning, integrate biosphere principles in all that we do and, and work to achieve our net zero carbon targets. To support our residents, we will work, work hard to ensure everyone has somewhere they can afford to live and that we put residents' wellbeing at the centre of what we do. We are also conscious in all of this pressing need to deal with the council's long-term funding position. For years now, we've been promised an island deal which has never materialised. We need to call, to call a halt to the endless talk and empty promises and to see some actual measures. Similarly, the talk of levelling up must turn into tangible action. It is something the island needs, not the talk, action. In all of this, we would adhere to the core values as set out in the plan to focus on our communities to work together. All of this means nothing without action. You can have the best plans in the world, but without taking positive steps to put them effectively, they mean nothing. So that is the pledge we will make to turn this plan into positive action for our businesses, our residents and our precious island. Thank you. So I move to the oh sorry, Councillor Jones Evans. Just going to second that, second your oh, second. paper. You got there before I even did the motion. <laughs> if I could just say just one thing, if I may, leader, um, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with all of the alliance and uh, hand on heart. It hasn't been difficult to put all this together because everyone's coming from the same same place, the, the love, deep love of the island, and uh, and you know what's the best for the future for the environment and for our residents. So, so it's been absolute joy and I really look forward to making this document um, a real living thing. And I'll do all I can to make sure this happens. That, well done, Julie. I didn't know you were going to say that, but absolutely, I agree with you. Thank you. OK, right. Uh, no one else wishing right. Then I'll... Uh, Councillor... Oh, oh. 
Brody, and then Councillor Garrett. Thank you, Chair. I've got a couple of questions of your corporate plan, but of course it will be discussed at full council in November. It's more difficult for me to contribute to the debate there, given that I chair it. So I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you a couple of questions. Firstly, within the proposed corporate plan, there is a commitment, although you didn't mention it in your in your speech, to reducing poverty and inequality within the most deprived areas of the island. At the July 2021 Health and Wellbeing Board, I expressed my frustration with the failure of successive administrations to do this very thing within my ward of Pan and Barton, the most deprived ward of them all. I was asked by you, Leader, to submit a list of suggestions. I did this promptly. As of today, I have had no response from you or your cabinet colleagues on the Health and Wellbeing Board. How can my residents have any faith in this sort of meaningless commitment when they and I know it is just words and another soon to be dust covered document? I wouldn't say it was just words, Jeff. As you know, the oils and the wheels of this um, uh, this council works very slowly, unfortunately, um, and it has been all taken on board. How we implement some of those questions that you've raised, we are working on, and Councillor Love will, will bear, because he's on that health and wellbeing board with me, we are both working into it as we are with Debbie with education. So, but as you know, things don't happen in a month or a week. It does take almost a year. Councillor Stevens. I undertook some time ago um, informally with uh, Councillor Brody uh, to take things forward because I feel that it's uh, imperative that the ward member is involved with the pathway forward. There's nothing more, um, how can I say, important than making sure that whoever the ward member is, whatever the problem, that they are taken forward and assist with the process. It's then that we get sustainable uh, pathways made and, and bridges built. I think that that's where we need to be. Um, health and Wellbeing Board, brilliant. But it's the work that goes on behind the Health and Wellbeing Board. Take on board, uh, you know, Councillor Andre, Councillor Lovin, indeed yourself. The gentleman over there, Councillor Brody, I would like to see involved with the talks, because if we don't involve the ward member, we will find that some of the opportunities within the ward could be overlooked. Thank you. Councillor um, Carla. Thank you, Councillor Brody, and I undertake to make a commitment to you right here and now that I will come and have a coffee with you. We will sit down and we will have a discussion about some of the things which you have raised, because there is nothing more important in my book than, than poverty, having lived in it very much in the past. And therefore, um, I will, you know, we want to make sure that this applies right across the island, of course. But there are some great changes afoot within health, uh, particularly the Health and Social Care Bill, which is obviously the next agenda. Thank you, Chair. And firstly, I'd like to apologise to Councillor Brody that I do actually have my back to him. So I'm sorry just the way this is set out. I would actually like to highlight two things that we have already implemented um, from my portfolio, um, which have directly benefited residents in Councillor Brodie's ward, as they have in uh, across the whole island. The first one was that we were very quick to act to access the Government Holiday and Activities Fund, which was aimed specifically at our poorest families to give them that extra support. And it was actually delivered to 12 providers and it was highlighted through the schools. We've also now, the funding uh, criteria slightly changed. It was, and um, we've just released another um, funding that we managed to, to glean from government, which was the Household Support Fund, of which 50% of the, 
had to go towards supporting families. And it was a broader remit that could be used for fuel poverty as well as for providing food vouchers. So there are things that we have actually acted on very quickly because we felt it was important and because it aligns with our corporate priorities. Thank you. OK, Councillor Brodie. Well, if I could come back on that and then ask my second question. Well, it's can I just say that I've been the elected member for over 16 years for PAN and Barn. And over those years, primarily under Conservative administrations, I haven't half heard a load of waffle about my ward. I've seen health and well-being schemes, plans, whatever, that weren't worth the paper they were written on. I was a member of that board at one point, and I, I left after a while because it's just a talking show. It's actually a waste of officers' time and councillors' time. And I said that at the meeting back in July. Now, I know you're all well-meaning people. I gave you a list. Deliver. The list I gave you is easy, in my view, if you really mean it. Deliver. Don't allow me to get in three years' time to keep coming back in. I'm not going to let you off the hook on this one because I've had enough. My residents have had enough. Moving on to my second question, another controversial issue. Given the very welcome first commitment in your proposed corporate plan to the delivery of more so-called and desperately needed affordable housing, I would prefer social housing, can you, Leader, explain how this balances with nearly every planning committee member of your group, including one cabinet member not here today, being predisposed to opposing the use of the only credible current methods by which bulk affordable housing can be delivered. For instance, 166 affordable homes within a development of 473 new homes. Homes desperately needed by so many local families who do not have the benefit of home ownership or tenancy security. Without the powers or ability to build council housing and housing associations that are more interested in sitting on reserves, how do you, as a leader of this council, propose to deliver on this commitment when the only realistic and evidenced method of delivery will be most likely be rejected by your colleagues on the planning committee? Thank you. You switch your microphone off, please, Councillor Brody. Thank you. Did you want? Okay. Uh, uh, just, just to say that uh, to remind uh, certainly colleagues and perhaps others who aren't aware, but in fact, this housing are delivering 400 affordable homes in the next two to three years uh, with planning applications coming through from them as presented to us about four weeks ago chair uh, so that's our commitment we're working with them to assist them to bring those affordable homes forward and the social housing part of those developments they're all smaller developments which are quite useful uh, and i would say as a general comment um, it, we use this word affordable homes uh, and we just let it roll off our tongues, affordable. Of course, at the current time, it's 80%. 80% of about 220,000, the average home. Uh, bringing the house in at affordable terms, in inverted commas, at about £185,000. That's probably not affordable to most of the, the people that are desperately in need of 
living somewhere in a home. So I, I know our island plan is trying to get that down to 60 percent, but we're working within a framework that is extraordinarily difficult. Uh, and I'm only sorry, uh, Jeff, that we don't build our own social homes. And I know Ian and I and others talk about this quite a, quite a lot and quite often. And, and let's hope we could, uh, and, and Julie's helping us on that conversation as well. Let's hope we could bring forward those homes, uh, colleagues, at some stage. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Phil. What I would say is Ian and I have been in non-stop meetings over housing with all of the registered housing providers. We have all of their aims and objectives for the next few years. We will be pushing forward. Ian, did you want to come in because you're, you're in responsible for housing? I think, uh, Leader, you know, you've adequately uh, summed up where we are. Um, there's a lot of movement going on behind the scenes. Phil's quite right. And I believe you, you were partly to what, what our thoughts were previously with regard to building our own council housing rented and let's park the affordable or non-affordable element over there whilst we still try and negotiate. But these are the these are the areas that we are trying to pursue at the moment. And we welcome welcome your input on it, Jeff, as much as I do gentlemen behind. And, and indeed, others across across the authority, because quite honestly, it's a big, big ask. And um, I think that the the major, um, uh, you know, uh, players such as Sovereign and uh, others, uh, and Vectus, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got them all coming in now, but. We've got we've 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 got the dialogue going with with everyone. Um, we're also looking to do things ourselves. Um, you'll find on a later paper that things are moving forward in a in a steady uh, process. We wouldn't expect to sprint at things after um, housing elements within this local authority lay, laying dormant for so many years. But we need to we need to move forward purpose, purposefully. And I think it's I think it's there, and I think that um, there's a willingness um, within the alliance, and I know there's a willingness across the chamber, especially from uh, councillors such as yourself, who've been calling for it for so many years. So um, let's just go through, keep the dialogue going, and make sure that we're we're driving forward for positive um, outcomes. I'll leave it at that, leader. But you know, we, these these things take take time to set up, especially as especially as, as we're starting from virtual ground zero. Thank you. Um, Councillor Jones Evans. Um, yeah, th thank you. Just wanted to remind Cabinet and, uh, and other members present that, of course, uh, Regen were very, um, very pleased to be successful in bidding for one million pounds virtually of uh, money from government to clean up brownfield sites specifically for housing. So that's a massive investment for the island because, as we know, brownfield is particularly difficult to uh, get ready for, for to make a good place for someone's home. And um, just to say. You know, our house, our social and housing providers that we work with on the island, you know, they have a they have a commitment as part of their mission statements as for, to provide social housing. That is what they're there for. It's not for sitting on cash reserves. In my in my view, and I know um, leader and uh, and the deputy leader are both in in constant dialogue with them to move move this very very important um, issue forward. Uh, Councillor Brody. I understand a lot of what you're saying, I think, but you're missing the point of my question here. Because there are members of your group who do not understand that there is a housing crisis on this island, in my view. And I think it's imperative that you spell it out to them, give them some numbers. Because I have sat and listened to members of the planning committee who quite clearly have no understanding and nimby attitude and i think that is deeply worrying thank you noted thank you um, councillor garrett thank you chair um a bit of a theme here because i want to speak about poverty as well um so in reading the corporate plan first of all i do, I do welcome it i i think the three headline um 
priorities are ones that we can all get behind. Um, I certainly welcome the focus on transparency and engagement. And uh, what I do hope, though, is that this is very much a living document, because what I find with this document, it's very introspective. It's very inward looking. It's so many of the things referred to are reviews rather than hard action and hard targets in a number of areas targets and commentary are presented as activities though that is not an activity and I, I would hope we can beef that up by the time it comes to to full council um, and certainly I would feel that once those reviews are out of the way that it would be great to see by May next year a revision and a strengthening of this corporate plan um, to really place some hard targets for delivery over the remainder of, of, of the municipal cycle. One appeal I would particularly make though is around poverty um, that it there is a place here within the corporate plan to have an overarching theme to it of addressing poverty not necessarily placing it as a headline priority because it cross cuts so, so many areas but to, to draw out and be very clear that what what a lot of the activities will be about economic uh, social housing um, well-being, health, um, uh, poverty is mentioned in, in, in all of those sorts of areas when, when you look, look through things. Um, a particular appeal, and I, I may have missed it, but I did read it carefully. I, I hope I missed something, but there is no reference that I could see to reversing the cuts in the local council tax support scheme. And as you will know, Chair, this is something I have been absolutely passionate about the erosion of the support that we give to those on the lowest incomes has has been utterly scandalous i have been in that position in my life where you find 20 pence which did literally down the back of a sofa and rejoiced because that is how bad poverty can hit you and, and low income can. thankfully I've, I've come through those situations i'm sure others in this chamber and and, and outside will have similar sorts of stories. The local council tax support scheme m must be considered as, as an area in which we can really help people back up from a position of, of, of great despair. We're seeing the potential for inflation hitting 5%. We're seeing people who have lost their access to universal credit. We're seeing people f facing the decision between heating their homes and eating. One thing that we can do straight away is to start to think about how we reverse those, those cuts. I will leave those thoughts with you, but don't be surprised if there may be an attempt to amend the corporate plan come the 27th of November along those lines. Thank you, Councillor Garrett. And I do hope, really, really hope that you'll help us work on our budget plan so that we can make sure that there is enough funding there, because I know it's something you raise every time. I will certainly commit myself to do that. Fabulous. Um, so without further ado, so the recommendation is to um, to support the uh, corporate plan. And second it. Second from Councillor Judy Jones Evans. All those in favour? Be a bit silly not to. Oh, so tough, it's nearly killed us. Well, there's six of us, is there? Right, the Queen. <laughs> okay, that's the Royal. Right, moving on to um, item number six on the agenda, which is the implications of the Health and Social Care Bill. I note, uh, I think it was just for noting on the um, corporate scrutiny, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. So, um, Councillor Love, did you wish to say anything or Laura? So, apologies, Chair. It was just a um, corporate scrutiny. I um, didn't have anything to note, but I um, just noted it. But the policy and scrutiny for health and social care in September did make a couple of recommendations. I know one has already been actioned by Council Love. So, just whether we wanted to um, acknowledge uh, the second, the second, uh, sorry, the first item, which is on page 61, um, power of three, the first bullet point. That was just the only recommendation that came from from scrutiny. Oh, 31, yeah. Okay, Councillor Love. 
So uh, thank you, Chair. This is the first of uh, three papers here tonight um, that um, I'm bringing forward, um, all related to health and social care and our general well-being. Um, so um, uh, this paper comes about um, led by directives really from central government and changes to the health and well proposed changes to the health and um, uh, uh, social care bill. And um, uh, there is no doubt that we are in a period now of great change. Um, and we've had lots of announcements recently, as we've all heard from um, Prime Minister Boris John Johnson. But this paper is really about enabling us to move forward and look at some of the changes that we need to make in order um, to do our business as a council. Um, and so, to that end, so I've just got to turn to the right page. Can I get there? Um, we are uh, recommending um, um, from the options A and D. So A, which would be um, to explore the potential of forming a joint committee for the delivery of an integrated care system, NHS service and Isle of Wight service for the Isle of Wight on the basis of, and um, these are big words, <laughs> delegating responsibility for the delivery of better care funding available activities uh, to joint committee in, in the first instance. So essentially what we've got is we've got um, a movement driven by government towards collective decisions. There is no doubt about it that, that the integrated care system is coming and we need to prepare for that. And this enables us to change and move forward into that position. And that's essentially what this, this paper is about. And the D, uh, part D of that, um, which is also recommended, is to look at the abolishment of the Isle of Wight Integrated Care Partnership, which will follow on from, um, uh, sorry, integrated, uh, the integrated care systems, which is a complex um, um, understanding, which we're still trying to work on with our partners. Um, and that's what this paper is about, to establish. So, so it's to look at the abolishment of the Isle of Wight Integrated Care Partnership at the point that a new integrated care system um, um, uh, sponsored local place based, big words, words that I don't actually kind of quite understand sometimes, um, um, partnership arrangements is established for the Isle of Wight. So basically we're getting rid of the integrated care partnership and, and we're moving forward into the integrated care system. That's what this paper is about. Thank you. Um, I'm just happy to second Councillor Love's proposal, if that's all right, unless there's any more questions, and, and put that and the, and if I could maybe make that amendment, if that's yes, possible. Yes, and sorry, so that's those two points, and of course, uh, the recommendations from uh, 31. Yeah, the, about the adult, uh, director of adult social care position on the, uh, on the integrated care system. NHS Boys Follows the Hampshire and the Isle of Wight Integrated Care System Partnership for those who haven't got the papers in front of them. Thank you, Councillor Love. It, it is a fact that we are being driven nationally in this direction, and that's really important to, to, to enable us to, well, consider what we're going to do in a, in a proper and right way. Okay. Anyone, any other questions on those? No? Okay. So I move to the vote. Please, all those in favour? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Move on to the next item, please. Councillor Love, I think it's you again. Uh, the Better Care Fund update, please. Apologies, listeners. Um, the Better Care Fund uh, review for 2021-22 uh, and moving forward into 23-24 was first implemented in uh, 2017. And again, this is part of what I have previously said. It's a piece of work which exists between the CCG local authority and NHS. Um, it, it essentially covers three core areas, um, which is early help and prevention, uh, uh, rehabilitation and reablement and recovery. And of course, the third element is to refresh the Better Care Fund, which is what we now need to do. Um, now, I'm hoping that that will take account 
of some of the things that Councillor Brodie has uh, brought out here in terms of poverty, um, addressing those things, and uh, and I welcome, as I've already said, his, his conversations there. But um, there are 11 areas, really, within this document, um, and it covers things like learning disability, um, hospital discharge to home schemes, um, and, um, you know, just promoting independence. And so, um, again, I'm recommending um, option one here to note the proposals and to provide approval for one key areas of review for 2021. We must review this, this, this document. Um, how the Better Care Fund allocated funds are in, um, oh, sorry, intended to be managed by senior staff of both the Council, Hampshire, Southampton and the Isle of Wight CCG Commissioning Group. We need to share our resources better. We need to better manage those resources and we need to better direct those uh, resources. And so um, by bringing this paper forward now, it allows um, our senior management staff, staff behind me, to move forward. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Judy Jones Evans seconds that. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak or ask questions? Uh, Councillor Andre. Thank you, Chair. Bearing in mind that we've just um, accepted a recommendation for the potential for forming a place-based joint committee for the delivery of NHS services and um, looking to abolish the Isle of Wight Integrated Care Partnership, which I believe would actually, could potentially be in place for 22-23 the option um, on page 74, 42, number two, um, we are being asked to, um, have to, to agree how the Better Care Fund allocated funds are intended to be managed for 22-23. So how, if, if the um, local care, um, pay, sorry, the local place-based joint committee goes ahead, what implications will that have on the application of the Better Care Fund and its review? There are lots of implications because it's essentially we're moving from a local authority driven um, um, approach to a, a more collective approach. Now, as we've heard from Councillor Brodie, there have been issues with the Integrated Care Partnership before. Um, um, uh, it has made some progress in some areas, but other areas perhaps it, it could have done better. So we're hoping that the integrated care system will actually um, enable um, a much more joined up thinking about how we move forward. Now, I am slightly nervous about the balance of relationship between the two organisations, but, but, but this paper allows us to actually start to talk about some of those things. Um, and, uh, and we do need to make sure that we, um, uh, we give the community a better voice in this. So much of, much of what is happening, I shall certainly be making sure that the community has a better voice in this, but there are implications to it which have yet to be uh, really realised. We're in a difficult position because we're trying to second guess what comes out of the white paper. OK, so um, uh, and so that's really quite uh, a difficult thing for us to do. So what we're trying to do is, 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 is leave actually some of the doors open so that we can then uh, readjust them further down the line. Does that make sense? I answered what you want. OK, I'm just going to bring the chief exec. Yes, thank you, Leader. Uh, and just to add to that, the, the Better Care Fund is already managed jointly between Health and the Council. Yes. So the important thing is it's managed in the joint place. It would just be moved into a different joint place to be managed. So effectively, the structures allow us to do that. Thank you. Okay. That's what this paper is about. OK, if there's no further questions, we move to the vote on adopting that. All those in favour, please. Thank you very much, Councillor Love. Hang on, which one are you up to now? It's you again, isn't it? <laughs> it is me again. I thought it, I thought things were going well in previous meetings where nobody had asked me any questions, and now all at once. It, it, it's been absolutely fascinating for me to come into this role, to be honest, and, and, and I'm doing a huge amount of learning. And it still is very early days. And the, the, the trouble is that a lot of big decisions are here at our door right now.
OK, they've arrived at this particular time. And it's trying to make sure that we get the very best that we can as a cabinet and for the future out of what's happening. Um, so um, the Living Well and Early Year Services is the one that I've actually talked most about um, recently. Um, and so this is about this service going out to be, um, well, essentially... Uh, recommissioned and, and, and tendered for uh, across the island and adapted and changed. And so I think it's really important that our administration is seen to do that in, the, in, in a really transparent way. And so, so as um, you know, it, it really is, um, as um, Councillor Andrew Garrett said, uh, it really, it, it's about a living document um, which will change. So again, this is another enabling paper that enables us to move forward in a very um, difficult world. I have spoken extensively with um, with people out there in the community and had lots of meetings with my director, sat, sat behind me, who I'm very grateful to. And I've also spoken to our MP recently about um, where we're heading in the future for how, um, well, adult social care and perhaps to a certain degree public health is going to be organised. Um, so this paper here is essentially, hopefully, empowering some of the community. This is where we've been around and spoken to some of the town and parish councils, asking them about um, what, we, what they would like to see happen and the reshaping of this service. But more importantly, that we have a proper fair tendering process for this, um, which is transparent. So you then need for me to say I am recommending um, option one, which. Chair, would you mind if I read that out? I'll go say something at the end of it as well. Is that OK, Councillor? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Is that OK with you? It's OK, Chair. Yeah. So option one, I'll just read it out. because I think it's, it's, it's worthwhile um, people you know, listening, tuning in, um, under, under, having, under, people understanding about it. So option one is to commence formal reshaping and tendering of a living well and early help service for adults with a revised service spe specification, which reflects the feedback provided by local people and stakeholders as part of the recent consultation and regular reporting from the current providers. To offer a contract for a three-year initial term with the option to review and extend up to a further two years. The three-year contract for the recommissioning of a living well and early help service would ensure that the service is developed to meet the needs of our island's residents for the future and to encourage our local voluntary sector partners to bid for the contract opportunity, as there will be a greater certainty in terms of funding. I think that's really important if we just highlight this is, is a real, a really good opportunity to strengthen um, our voluntary sector partners um, and really provide a very locally based service and also having that, that understanding of how the island works, which we know it's sometimes doesn't always translate um, to, the, to the North Island. Um, and just, if I just, thought, just go to the evaluation um, at number 40, power of 40 on page 83. The benefits of having sustainable living well and early help offer gives the island's community greater resilience to support the statutory services that we provide in effectively using the resources which are currently available to meet our island residents' needs. So this, this to me is a bit of a no-brainer, um, uh, Chair, and I'm happy to second that, Councillor, for you. Thank you. Okay. Or oh, um, anyone else wishing to speak to that or question? No? OK, move to the vote. All those in agreement? I'm just checking that there was no one, none of the other cabinet members that wanted to come in because I'm, 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 I'm conscious that I'm, I can't see them behind me there. OK, so this gives you a bit of a break now, Councillor Love. You can put your mask on and, um, and, and breathe for a little minute. And while we move on to Councillor Jordan, that's now got rather a lot um, on your plate. So the first one is the, um, uh, the inherited, the, the inherited project of the ride interchange, transport interchange that, that um, we've got in. So if you'd like to speak to that, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, absolutely. Just before I do, I won't, uh, I'll be very brief. I, a couple of housekeeping, if I may. Uh, on page 121, uh, item six, 
the number under para 19 for housekeeping should be under para 20. Uh, 19 doesn't refer to any, anything of any... Uh, it's just, it talks, uh, 19 just talks about strategic contacts above and local aspirations. The point is it should read para 20, that's that. And the second housekeeping is on page 124 under 20, the point that we're talking about, C, it should read the parking bays immediate to the west of the pier access road have been removed to provide a ground level planting bed it says parking bed it's quite important that we change that since some of the objections have been to the amount of road and parking space on the pier um, those are the only two uh, housekeeping that i've got chair so uh, i won't say too much about this we're being asked um, under Item 60 on page 130, there are two options. I'm asking you to accept option one. Uh, and if I may, Chair, read this out. A cabinet note the contents of the consultation feedback. That's in the appendix. There are 80 pages of it. And we said that when we did this consultation, we would listen to what people told us and asked us. And we've done that insofar as that we have been able, under the funding criteria, um, uh, and parameters that we were given and constraints. We've, we've done that, and that list that I just mentioned to you on page 124 is evidence of changes to the original scheme that was brought forward. I won't go through them, uh, but they're all changes to the benefit of the uh, community and the scheme as asked for by people responding to the consultation. So, um, um, again, in, in this option 6, it should read para 20 again, that's housekeeping, in list A to T above, and the resulting revised outline design as shown in Appendix 7 and 8. With the exception that the relocation of the taxi rank and the design of the Rose Garden be explored further, we, uh, we have already moved that further forward, and I can advise you that... Uh, the taxi rank will be moved from the current position um, in front of the shops to the south side of the Esplanade. That was what the taxi operators asked us to do. And that is, is again, what we've done. And we've moved it to a place where they suggested, which is by the Rose Garden to the north of the Esplanade, retaining all of the car parking spaces in front of the shop frontages on the south of the Esplanade and replacing um, the taxi, uh, proposed taxi spaces, both on the pier access and on the Esplanade with new uh, spaces further by the Rose Garden. So we have moved on a little from that, um, uh, th this option. Uh, and it's to be explored further. Well, we've explored it further and decided that's what we're going to do with key stakeholders. We've done that, the taxi operators and the shops and businesses. Uh, prior to a final design decision being a design decision being made and further detailed design of planted areas of the scheme that's ongoing with uh, numbers of community deliver of people delivering this for this in our community uh, people from royal parks are helping us with that planting out green green shrubs for the scheme uh, we're being asked to uh, that all other matters required to progress and deliver all elements of the Transforming Cities Fund funded ride transport hub project to be delegated to the Director of Neighbourhoods in accordance with this decision that we are making uh, and the requirements of the DFT and within available Transforming Cities Fund uh, resources. These decisions are required to enable the design of the whole scheme to be finalised in accordance with these recommendations insofar as practical, legal and financial considerations allow. And you heard earlier a question about the safety audit. This is passing that on to uh, the director to uh, understand when that safety audit is finished and finalised to make the decisions about finalising the scheme at that stage. At this stage, we are in principle agreeing this scheme. The detail will be finalised as we move forward. 
um, that's option one, colleagues. I propose that we accept option one. Are there any questions, Julie? Um, I just wanted to really just offer my thanks, uh, Councillor Jordan, because I know um, this landed on your on your lap, uh, um, you know, back back in back in end of May, um, and I think you and the team have done a really good job in listening to the the public and allaying concerns um, where possible and integrating. Um, ideas where possible, like the one, the classic one you just said about moving the, the, the taxi rank was 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 one that came to me as in my regen role was about supporting those businesses on that side or that side of the street. So, just wanted to say, say thank you. And this is obviously a, a, a new chapter um, in the in the trans, transport transport um, area of ride. And you know, I think as an administration, we welcome the, the new um, facilities for walking and cycling and also improve our uh, bus. So it's got to be for the good of the island and for um, sustainable transport. So I just want to say thank you. I know it's been a really, it's been quite a journey you've had, had yeah. this summer, but I'm, um, you know, right behind you on this one. Thanks, Julie. Okay. No, uh, okay. Ian, did you want to speak? No? Councillor no. Churchman. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. First of all, this isn't a ride interchange. Once we removed the hover travel link, it just became a redesign of ride Esplanade station and bus. So I'd like to clear that up. Um, has health and safety and public health been uh, acquainted with the level of the pedestrian access up the pier, because as I was already asked by a constituent up the stairs, the exhaust fumes are going to be at about just the right height for everybody to take in, because the footway currently is lower than the road. And I think that's terribly important. I think the footway is a brilliant idea. Let's get people walking up and down the pier. However, they're not going to do it if they're going to get mouthfuls of fumes all the time. Um, so that, that was, as I said, public health and health and safety. Do they have a say in this or should they be consulted? Um, the toilets, obviously, is the really contentious issue. That's not. Um, I understand that Rye Town Council currently spend £36,000 a year no, that's wrong as well. That's two, two wrong things, Councillor Churchman. Sorry? That's two things that you've got wrong in the first sentence, Councillor Churchman. It's not contentious. The, the, the toilets are not contentious. And neither do Ride Town Council spend £36,000 a year on it. May I carry on, Chair? Um, as I was saying, it is contentious because the toilet's been removed and at the moment there does not seem to be a plan to put something in place. Are you in fact, sure. would you let me please finish? Would you let me please finish? It would be polite. Um, is there, is... I have explained to you I'm, three I'm sorry, times, Chair. What, Vanessa, what the, that the toilets what is are the point? Station. You, 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 you seem to refuse or be unable to accept that. I don't know why that is so. The toilets are going in the station. That's the fourth time I've told you publicly that. Fourth time. Oh, yes. Now, could I add to that? When are they going in the station, please? During the scheme period, which is running from January 2022 to March 2023. And, Chairman, I would like to ask, where is that printed? Where are the plans for this? Because, I'm sorry, Southwestern Railways. Um, and also, will it be guaranteed that those toilets are open for the same length of time as currently, because the station at the moment are noted for only opening the toilets when the ticket office is open. The answer to that is yes, they will be open. Right. And uh, my next question is the walkway. It was noted from upstairs uh, as a, a question. Currently, the walkway finishes at pier end and there is there a danger that people, in fact, will get wet feet. How do they access the walkway 
up onto the actual station platform. Thank you, Chair. The, 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 the design that is being proposed is to have access at the same level onto the pier <sighs> through the station. Uh, I, my understanding is it's electric doors, I think, is it? Yeah, my understanding is there'll be electric doors that open and close. Come back. This is at the pier end. Uh, you mean the wet end or the dry end? It, Do you mean the land side or seaside? Yes, when you get to the end of the walkway, when you get to ride pier, how do you get from the actual walkway into the station? Because as I understand it, the walkway is lower than the actual um, platform, etc. Uh, look, we'll come back on that uh, on 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 levels. Uh, I don't have that to hand. Uh, one thing is absolutely clear is that people and cyclists will go through the station onto the pier. Whether that means uh, if it's cyclists and, and disability access, clearly it will be a level access on and off. Whether it's a flat, I should say, level, uh, and it won't be steps. If indeed that's uh, that's what's needed, I don't know actually whether whether you're right or wrong, Vanessa. Whether the levels are the same or not, I don't know. As soon as we know, we will get the answer to you. May I also correct one other thing? This isn't a consultation about. There wasn't a consultation about the actual um, whole design. The consultation was about what colour should we paint the blooming railings? Thank uh, you. Not quite true, Vanessa. Uh, uh, control barriers, uh, toilet blocks, seaside planting thing, tulip tree, egress from the pier, cycling crossings, pedestrian areas, uh, paved areas, cycle scoot, scooter parking, Conservation type curbs, bus shelters, real time. It's a little more than just colour, Vanessa, frankly. Okay, can I bring in uh, Councillor Judy Jones Evans? Just, quick, so just, wanted to, just to clarify from Councillor Jordan, um, all of the, any any access will be DDA compliant, won't it? Absolutely. There we go. Thank you, Councillor Jones Evans. Councillor Ian Stevens, member for Ride. Absolutely a member for Ride since 2001 and remember the initial uh, interchange proposal that failed because of uh, differences in opinion and uh, different barristers from different landowners all falling to one side. I welcome this. I never thought it would come again. Ride has always been subject to change. It's one of those things that if you look at the old uh, photographs of um, the Esplanade or even Union Street, you'll see it's changed dramatically over the years. And um, as I say, I welcome it. What I would say is that um, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Jordan and the team for actually bringing back the consultation that was uh, not there initially. And um, People can criticise consultation. They can criticise the lack of consultation. But what they can't do is actually say that, OK, that consultation, those considerations uh, that came forward were not listened to, evaluated and dealt with in the correct manner. Um, not as robust as some might have wanted, but hang on there. This is, this is the transport interchange. I've got, I've, got, I've, I've got feelings in the back of my body that say, I want that land on the western seafront to be land for the people of Ride. I don't, want to see, I don't want to see another toilet block go up there. I certainly don't want to see another beef burger stall down there. We've got enough in and around Ride at this moment in time. Let's have that open space. Let's make it something. It's down to the people of Ride now, the Town and Parish Council, the Isle of Wight Council is involved, and the residents, to make that an area which is, if you like, 
a gateway to the island that we can be proud of, that we can enjoy. And the vista looking up through Union Street in a way, uh, one way, and looking down and across the uh, uh, seashore towards Portsmouth, something to be um, admired and very, very unique. All I'm going to do is I'm going to vote. I'll, I'll vote for this, but I'll be watching what's coming on that bit of land. And I will be vocal about it, because if there's any changed, any changes that make that an area that is not for the people of Ride and visitors and tourists, then I will be most miffed. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Brody indicated to speak. Oh no, sorry, Councillor Love first. Sorry, Councillor Love and Councillor Brody. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. I mean. Um, I sit here thinking to myself, we, when we came into office, we said we would be open and transparent and that we would communicate with you um, at all levels. And certainly um, this, uh, this debate has certainly um, been open and transparent and engaging for everybody. And I think that's a really, really healthy thing to do. The most important words that I had heard there to me were that, that this is not finalised that this is the beginning of that process, it's not finalised and that it will be finalised further down the route. And that gives lots of opportunity for change and further engagement. And that to me is what is important. I don't live in Ride, but I talk to people of Ride and I have read all of your communications and there's been quite a lot of them from all sorts of different people. Um, but this is an opportunity that I don't think that we can miss. We made a mess of it previously in terms of 10 years ago when there was money there and we had to send money back. So from my particular point of view, we cannot miss this opportunity. The money will not come round again and there is still opportunity to significantly change and influence this scheme. And I'd like to thank all of those who have worked on it, but I will be voting for this. Councillor Brodie. Thank you, Chair. And like, like Councillor Love, obviously I'm not a ride member and I've, I've uh, observed the, the lobbying that I've received as, as, as a backbench councillor in over recent weeks with, uh, with interest. I've read everything. I've actually had to correspond with people who've written to me as chairman of the Alawai Council, who I've always generally referred them on to their local members. However, Chair, just trying to be helpful here, you seem to have slipped out of the habit of referring to what the scrutiny committee said in terms of this, where they actually noted the report and recommended support for it. Now, I would just remind everybody that the corporate scrutiny, meeting, corporate scrutiny committee of this council is opposition controlled, uh, is not in the hands of the Alliance group, and for them to support it indicates to me that this isn't really as controversial as Councillor Churchman is seeming to indicate. Thank you, Chair. I was, actually just, I was actually just going to do that in the final summing up to say that that was noted and supported at corporate scrutiny. Phil, um, do you want to move to the vote? I was going to say that as well, and thanks, Jeff, for bringing that. I, know, I, I wouldn't expect anything less of your 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 dedication to these matters to um, have, have reminded us of that, uh, uh, Jeff, and I thank you for it. Okay, all those in favour, please show. Thank you very much. Moving on to, uh, oh, sorry, Phil, it's you again, the bus um, service improvement plan. Um, and just to say that noted that uh, and so it was supported by the corporate scrutiny. So that's um, cross chamber. Right for yeah. <laughs> sorry, I, was, I thought we had the pause for a moment. Yeah. I thought we were sorry. Well, I'm so sorry. I, I apologise, Chair. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, before us is the bus service improvement plan. We touched upon it earlier with some questions from the from the gallery, uh, which I thank them for. Um, it is uh, they, the start. Uh, and no more than that of 
a government initiative to encourage people uh, into other modes of transport and out of the um, out of their own uh, uh, vehicles and single vehicle journeys in particular. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, this improvement plan is to lead on to an enhanced partnership with Southern Vectis for, for other local. This is. Uh, right across the country, of course, by the way. It's not just the Isle of Wight. Um, and in other areas, of course, they're having to deal with n numbers of different providers. Um, uh, for ourselves, it's essentially, apart from a community, two community uh, providers, it's essentially Southern Vectis. It is the start. It will lead to an enhanced partnership plan. It's very much, in, in terms of the taxi operators that are here, it's very much um, not a plan to deprive taxi operators or any other operators of their ability to provide the serv important services that they do. It's very much about um, improving the bus service. And uh, without going over the wish list uh, from Southern Vectis, it is a wish list. And no more at this stage. It is suggestions from them as a commercial operator of factors that could increase and improve the bus service in an effort to encourage more people to use more buses. Uh, but it is no more than that. And we have not even started and won't until we enter into the enhancement plan, have not started uh, discussions of any detail whatsoever about any of the items on that list. Although some of them, of course, are things that we might like to see, like real-time information, uh, bus shelters, some important things for people to encourage them to use the buses. What, what, what we won't be doing is putting a bus lane in in Coppins Bridge. Uh, that's probably not ever going to happen and we'll probably rebuild Coppins Bridge before we even think about it uh, and uh, we are not going to entering into uh, um, uh, partnership arrangements with some vectors that would detract from all of the the important service that our taxi drivers deliver us I think there's about 140 or something like that if you're on the 180 something like that. it's an important service we know that they do late time economy they take people from isolated places from rural places when buses aren't running you provide an absolutely vital service for us it we are not going to make things harder for you. We'd like to make things a bit easier for you if we can. So uh, I just assure you and colleagues that that's all we're asking today is to move this into a, an enhancement partnership with Southern Vectis, details of which will, will be over at least two years. And you as a, a individually and as a group will absolutely be consulted in all our um, uh, in our efforts to move this forward, I hope that gives you some comfort because uh, I understand your concerns. Uh, and it, a, a document like this comes with all these this information in it, and it's quite weighty. Uh, but I hope I've given you some comfort that this is not uh, any attempt to give priority uh, less priority to taxi drivers and taxi services. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just another no-brainer, no really, isn't it, Councillor Jordan, that we should move move this forward. Um, we don't want to miss out on um, on any support for our um, our emerging and strengthening sustainable um, transport system, and of course, taxis and uh, buses are part of that, as as are cycling and walking. And you know, we never know; we might be lucky enough to get some get some trains if our approval. It, it, it comes forward as well. It's all about it's all that integration, isn't it? But I think you know buses are particularly important, especially as you just pointed out in in the in the rural areas. And um, yeah, I'll just give it give it my my support and look forward to the further ongoing consultation. And yeah, that's it really. Thank you, Julie. I, I should say as I didn't say, of course, for us there is a it probably will spread out very thin like jam, but there's three billion pounds being set aside that when we have our enhancement plan, we'll bid for. Uh, and that, if we're successful in that, will enable us to deliver some of the partnership uh, aspirations that we'll have to uh, improve sustainable transport. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. Councillor Jordan. 
So I think the important thing that I've picked up on this is that having that re reliability, so knowing the real time information is really, really important, is that having them regularly and it becomes an option that you can actually actually take. I went to Manchester last week, I went on the on the coach. It was great. Someone else drove for six hours. Fantastic. I had 50 other people on the, bu on the bus with me. So it was a real option for me because I knew I was going to get to my destination at my appointed time. So it was a no brainer. And tomorrow I'm going um, on the catamaran. I should again get in the bus from the to ride so I don't have to spend money on expensive petrol and also parking. So I'm, uh, I'm well happy to use a bus. And I know a few of you have got bus passes. Perhaps you should have declared an interest. Anyway, um, so the recommendation, it was supported by the um, I, by the full scrutiny. Um, and I noticed that Steve Hastings is listening in. We we hope he gets well too. I know there's so many, so many people are poorly at the moment. Um, so that, which recommendation are you going for, Phil, please? It's option two and option three. Yeah, yeah it's both options, Chair. OK, so we are voting for both options two and three with full support. All those in favour? Against? Abstention? Abstention. OK, so we move on to oh, the floating bridge. <laughs> Next steps. Uh, corporate scrutiny didn't make any comment because it was all in the legal phase. Uh, Councillor Jordan, the joy of the floating bridge. It's. Um, I'll, do, I'll bring you up to speed because it's it, uh, we're being asked to note uh, the continuation of the legal mediation process and the commissioning of an independent gateway review. Um, both, both of which we have undertaken. When we, when we came into office in May, one of the things that we committed to was to uh, resolve the issue of the floating bridge, and and that's what we're going to do. We're going to resolve it, uh, and the pro the um, process that we're going through are part of the target to resolve this. So uh, the mediation process, whilst it can run in tandem. Uh, has to be resolved, and uh, I've asked for that to be undertaken before the no uh, end of November, and I know that our legal team are uh, trying to uh, arrange it for before that date. And we've agreed and uh, authorised and uh, instructed for an independent cabinet-type gateway review, which will also, it's being undertaken right now, and will be completed by the end of November. When those uh, two processes are in, and the mediation process may not be finalised, it may or it may not, we don't know. The point is we need to uh, have the process going, we need to meet with the other side and see whether there is some common ground in terms of responsibility and losses uh, that, that we've suffered. Uh, but it, it is the case that sometimes mediation could be a second or a third time before you arrive at a, a final solution between the parties but we we will we will do that but the gateway review will inform a report that will come to cabinet in january it's currently planned for january is that on the forward plan or it's on the forward plan so it's currently planned for january to make a decision about the floating bridge um chair that, that's really all i i i have to say about it at this time and uh the recommendation is to continue the legal process and to, uh, the, uh, the commissioning of an independent gateway re review, which is uh, already in place. Uh, Councillor Love. Um, I'm happy to second that. And, uh, and, and I want to say to Councillor Jordan um, that I really appreciate his really transparent communications with me um, because I feel as though I've uh, learnt a great deal um, since certainly since this administration took, took took over about what's happening in the background and I want to reassure my community in East Cows that I am really confident that um, that this will be resolved and um, and that whilst we cannot always divulge all of the detail because of the legal matters that for the first time in a long time I feel really positive that, 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 that something will happen. I'm under no illusions that this is not going to be a quick solution because one 
whatever happens, you know, when decisions are made, there will then be a period of time from A to B, which needs to uh, be conducted in order to, to bring forward whatever those solutions are. Uh, and, um, and in the meantime, um, we will do our best and I will keep moaning, as I usually do, to try and get, um, you know, a, a good service for the people of East Cows in ensuring that, that, that passage across that river is continued um, in, in every possible way that we can. Um, it, there's no doubt, you know, we have to have a, you know, a bridge because this is a working port and both sides of the river are really important to each other. And, uh, and as I say, I just wanted to reiterate and give my thanks to you and to the team because, you know, if we'd have taken action much sooner, we would not be in the position that we are in now with huge losses and probably continuing huge losses as a result of something that should have been dealt with, in my opinion, two years ago. Um, and I do notice we have the, the Mayor of East Cows um, here in person, and we do have East Cows Town Councillors on listening, so I'm sure they are very, they're delighted with the, it does seem like after 22 weeks in, we are desperately um, pushing forward with this, Phil. Fi I finally feel there's, there's a little bit of um, light at the end of this very dark and very long tunnel. Uh, Councillor Jones Evans. Um, thank you. I just wanted to um, thank thank all the Alliance, really, and especially Councillor Jordan and, and you, um, Councillor PC Workhox, as our leader, in you know coming good on your on your pledges or our pledges to uh, get the floating bridge sorted. It's what it's what pretty much every person on the Isle of Wight wants to see. Um, so you know I'm delighted that we're you know we're getting some um, traction on this, and just purely from a a Newport perspective, um, it's really good to see if you go on page 307 and uh, paragraph 8 of the strategic con context, it's really good to see that the commit continued commitment to this cows, east cows crossing, not only for those two communities, but in the, in the business case for the, the, the floating bridge six, um, it was highlighted how important that is for alleviating the traffic um, that we get in Newport. So um, we, I, when I was chair of the community council, I did write to the Isle of Wight Council saying you know, how important this is. So I'm really glad to see this is here. So apologies for just being a bit local there for one, one moment, but thank you for moving this on and I look forward to getting a resolution that everyone's happy with. Thank you. Um, without further ado, all those in favour of those proposals? Thank you very much. I'm trying to move forward because we are all rather cold here. We've got all the doors and windows open and, and, and my nose is blue. Um, we're, uh, it's getting so cold. Uh, OK, so we move on to item number 12 or is it number 12? Yes, number 12, housing civil penalties. I think that's you, Councillor Stevens. Thank you for coming in. It is. I'm going to be very brief. Um, it went uh, before uh, corporate scrutiny. Um, and uh, a very good paper it is that I mentioned it at that time. I still consider it to be a very good paper. I still consider it to uh, be well set out. Um, I wouldn't have thought that I would get one question tonight on it because, quite honestly, frequently asked questions are, are within, etc. So, once again, thank you very much indeed for the presentation of a, a good uh, paper to me, which spelt out everything to everyone. And I think that to me, that's, that's, that's what a good officer does. So, it's uh, fast, it's fast tracking in, in actual fact for those that haven't got it in front of them, but I suggest you get a copy. Um, it, fa it fast tracks, uh, if you like, our, our um, uh, penalties on uh, uh, civic, uh, civic procedures, anything from, I, I believe, and uh, Colin might want to come in on this, anything such as um, uh, licensing within the premises or what have you, that type of thing. But we don't then have to take people to court. We, we um, Put the put the case before a panel, and uh, go forward from that, which is which gets away gets us away from walking through treacle and the expense of that. So, um, do you want to mention anything to that? Sure. I think just if you say it, it, it avoids the uh, 
whole process, which is quite complicated, and, and sometimes doesn't necessarily pick up on individual elements within uh, the breaches that, that some uh, landowners and proxy owners uh, get, that we actually experience. Oh, thank you. So that's it. Yep, move to the vote. Right, all those in favour of, is it option 47? All oh, oh, right, is it seconded? All oh, right, Councillor Love, second. Right, all those in, in favour of option 47, the local authority to decide to pen, civil penalties and associated financial, yes? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so we move on now for... Um, Item 13 on the agenda, which was the option for the future of the Chilton and Rookie, Rookley Primary School. I think that was noted in um, the papers, wasn't it? Scrutiny. Uh, Councillor Andre. Thank you, Chair. I would just like to draw um, everyone's attention to the fact that we do actually have, and my thanks to the monitoring officer, a revised paper that has come to Cabinet, which has actually added in a further um, recommendation that, um, that the above decision to consult with the public not be subject to a call-in. Um, decisions can be called in um, within a time period. Because of the delay of Cabinet, it would mean that if this decision was called in, we would not be able to go ahead with the consultation on the 1st of November, which, which would then, um, which would delay the uh, decision coming back to Cabinet. So that, that's why we've, um, um, there is that further recommendation. In terms of this paper, um, Everyone may be aware that this paper has been um, deferred because we wanted to be absolutely sure that we listened to all of the representations that were made to us and that we actually produced a paper at this stage that goes out with viable options to consultation. And I'm thankful to um, officers that have set out the paper very clearly, putting out the merits and the demerits of each option. I think it's only right and proper that having received a representation highlighting a historic covenant, that I can confirm that I have taken through officers advice from our Isle of Wight Council legal department who still have to make further inquiries but have confirmed that the covenant in itself would not prevent the school from being closed which I think was highlighted in relation to option B and I would stress that it's the site that is in, um, in education, not the actual building itself. So I will just, just re reaffirm that our legal department have confirmed that the covenant in itself won't prevent the school from being closed, but they are looking into it further. So you have the paper before you, you have the options before you. The recommendation coming to Cabinet is that Cabinet approve a period of an open six-week public consultation on all the options set out above during the autumn term 2021, that the above decision to consult with the public not be subject to call-in, and that a report be brought to Cabinet in spring 2022, setting out the outcomes of the public consultation period including recommendations on next steps and associated time frame and i'm very happy to take questions any questions no. right all those in favor Thank you, Councillor Andre. We will go to consultation, which I think is only right. Thank you. And I'm glad we took our time to get that right. Um, moving on now to item number 14, which is the rough sleeping accommodation grants. 
I think that might be you, Councillor Stevens, again. I think it is, but I, uh, I, I know that Count, uh, Councillor Julie Jones Evans is well versed and well steeped in this. In fact, I've walked in on a couple of conversations she's had. So, I'm, due to the position with my um, throat starting to crack up a bit, uh, Judy, would you like to take take this and introduce it for me, please? <clears throat> yeah, happy to, Councillor Stevens, and thank you for for coming in. Um, during your recovery um, period as well. Um, so yes, yeah, this is just a, obviously um, an opportunity to um, bring in some much needed and valued um, uh, counts, sorry, <laughs> government um, uh, funding to uh, to basically help with our, our homelessness um, issues. So there's really not much uh, not to like here. And we, we've got some 106 uh, monies that have been um, found and that can be allocated against this use. So um, it's quite, fairly straightforward recommendation really that we approve the business case um, at, at appendix one so um so there's there's the four um four items there a a b c and d so i think everyone's everyone's familiar with the paper um any questions thank you for seconder oh, well actually no i'll second yours it's, it's your paper <laughs> Of second Councillor Stevens. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Right, so we move on to um, Cabinet member announcement. Is there anyone that wishes to say anything? I know we're all getting really cold now. Um, Councillor Jones Evans. Just, just, just really, really quickly. Um, two things. Um, we'll have the result of the Visit Isle of Wight uh, D-bid. Um, that, that vote will be announced. I'm pretty sure it's Friday. Uh, so we'll know then about the future of, uh, of, of, the, of tourism marketing um, on the island. So we'll know then what the, uh, the levy payers have decided. And secondly, that it's really exciting that we've got meetings coming up with uh, Historic England and with Arts Council England um, with their renewed focus on the island. So it's a great opportunity and um, that they're really taking us very seriously and looking at the place for investment. So we'll keep you updated on that, of course, um, Leader. That's great. Superb. Uh, Councillor Debbie Andre. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to say a very big thank you to our secondary schools. Nearly all students have been offered a vaccination via the secondary school vaccination programme. Letters have gone to parents of secondary age pupils that haven't yet been vaccinated, sharing information about how they can book a vaccine. And we have circulated a letter to those home educated families sharing about how they can get their 12 to 15 year olds vaccinated. I would stress that there is no compulsion, of course, um, but that in line with our Director of Public Health, we are very much encouraging vaccination for that age group. And I would like to encourage the, the further uptake of that. But our schools have done a fantastic job in rolling out that vaccination programme for our 12 to 15 year olds. Thank you. Councillor Love. And I uh, thank... Uh, Councillor Debbie Andre for for making those comments. It's really important that we um, maintain the, the message of you know hands, face, and space right across the island at the moment in time, um, given um, the indications from you know national data. Um, and um, and I would give a very strong message out to people that um, vaccination works. It saves lives. And if you've not been vaccinated, please go get vaccinated, whatever your age. Um, and if you've got any concerns about that, then speak to your local health workers, our public health team, your doctors, whoever. But please ignore the uh, anti-vaxxers because there is no doubt about it that herd immunity, uh, uh, herd, <coughs> I can't even say the word, Herd um, immunity. immunity works and is saving lives. So that's the first thing. But the second thing, which is um, which is a really exciting thing, I really think for the island team, is um, is the integrated care discharge team are um, being given an award, hopefully, 
we're going to win. We've got our fingers uh, for the work which they've been doing in uh, supporting people being discharged from hospital. And this is part of the Local Government Association Awards, which is going to take place, I think it's the 17th of October, is that right? 4th of October. So it's a good job you said 4th, because I might have been going on a different day. Um, but I think that that's really encouraging um, to the island, because the island has actually led in the way that it's put this together right across the UK. So whilst there are some difficulties about funding in the future and how we move forward and, and different ideas about how we do that, the island is still making a difference, um, not just locally, but right across the nation. And that's really important. And, and I'd like to wish them well in that, um, uh, in that presentation. Um, I'm conscious that we've got a number of um, our cabinet members that um, are at home isolating. So uh, Councillor Bacon or um, Councillor Paul Fuller, who reckons he's somewhere, and um, who was it, Jonathan and Chris Jarman. Councillor Jarman, do, do any of you wish to speak? Councillor Bacon. Okay. okay, thank you, Councillor Bacon. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm very sorry not to be there this evening. Uh, it's It's been an interesting watch uh, from St Helens. Um, I don't really have an awful lot to say. Uh, I think <coughs> the main thing from my perspective is, of course, COP26 is coming up. Um, I hope people don't have to be reminded about that and uh, we'll be keeping beady eyes on that. Um, the island is advancing in terms of uh, environment and climate change and what we're doing. Um, while there's nothing from me this month, there will be quite a lot coming up in the next few months, in particular in relation to uh, developing the use of our biosphere status and also advancing dark skies uh, and also our mission zero in relation to uh, climate change and uh, carbon reduction. Um, so. As I, said, I think that's all I'll say, but it's nice to be asked to contribute. Um, and the only other thing I would underline everything that Carl has said in relation to um, taking care in relation to COVID, having just had it, uh, it's not nice. It was double jabbed. It uh, doesn't stop you getting it. Uh, I'm sure it makes it a lot uh, easier to get through, but it's still not nice to have. And I would strongly advise everyone to follow the government guidelines, as Carl says. Thank you, Leader. Thank you. I'll bring in Councillor Jarman, wishing to speak. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'd just like to echo the earlier remarks and provide emphasis behind the, the commentary about um, levelling up on the island, about the need for housing <coughs> for those in desperate need for it, in need of jobs, and in particular for the areas on the island where we can uh, use island businesses to provide services for us. You know, that's a particular focus of mine at the moment. Jobs and employment and housing, absolutely key elements that drive us forwards. Thank you. Um, and our third and final ca uh, cabinet member, Councillor Paul Fuller. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Are you able to hear yes, me? Yes, we can hear you. Fantastic. Um, quite a, it's been quite a busy month or so. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the issues that seems to be um, raising its head quite severely at the moment is about um, feedback concerning the planning portal and how residents engage with the planning service within the Isle of Wight Council. And certainly I know myself and Councillor Stevens have been sort of like... Um, pulling out some of our hair concerning some of the frustrations that we've got. But this is something that I've, I'm sort of like um, looking to deal with and hopefully we can try to uh, find a solution to try to resolve some of the issues that residents are, are, are contending with, trying to get applications through. I know that there is difficulty with Apple devices and people trying to make representations through those means. However, that is not really... Um, Although there is a reason for that, um, it, it's, it's not a good reason. And I think we need to be able to address that um, hands on. So I will be talking to Councillor Stevens about trying to resolve those issues. Thank you. 
Okay, so thank you to <coughs> all of those. If you could put yourself on mute, Councillor Fuller, that'd be useful. Will um, do. And um, thank you very much. So we move on now to, it was very nice that you could join us and I, um, I hope people appreciate that, I mean, this COVID really is vile and it's absolutely everywhere. And please do make sure that you do a, a minimum of three, if not four of your um, lateral flow tests, because actually on, on some of ours, it didn't show up until day three that they actually had it. it they needed to do the lateral flow three times. And I think this is why it's so um, you know, pre prevalent all around the island is because people don't realise they take, they feel a rough, take it. It says no, but you do really need to have at least a minimum of three days. OK, so moving on now to consideration of the forward plan. Is there anyone that has anything to say on the forward plan? Councillor Debbie Andres, could you have got that there? Thank you, Chair. There's just a couple of items that I would like to highlight. Once again, as part of our um, grant um, bid that we got, um, we've, we're going to be going out again with our holiday activity and food programme for the Christmas grants. So again, that's that's a good news story, as I referred to earlier. And the other thing that's coming to Cabinet in December that I'd just like to highlight at this point is um, our Isle of Wight skills plan. This is, um, this is an important document that actually identifies, um, highlights the skills needs of the local economy and identifies responses by the council businesses and education partners towards ensuring the island population is best placed to take advantage of economic and self-fulfillment opportunities. And this is something that actually runs across several of our portfolios. And it's been really good to, to work with other members on this. So I'd just like to highlight that that is coming to Cabinet in December. Thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing more on that, it's now members' question time. I haven't been get sent any. Have oh, we? Councillor oh, Councillor Brody sent one. Mm, you see, you thought I'd you forgotten really, you, and I nearly did. Do you really think you'd get away with that? <laughs> I but nearly, it's nearly the only did. Nothing that matters to me today. Right. Okay. So, um, so we've got a, count, a question Can from. Can I ask the question? If you want to, then. Yes, thank you. I want it on the record. OK. Thank you. Can the relevant Cabinet member, Councillor Phil Jordan, explain why, why massively disruptive island roadworks to replace all the traffic light signals at Coppins Bridge over an extended period at either side of Christmas have only on the 21st of October, four days ago, been made known to local councillors. And in that case, only three, myself, Councillor Jones Evans and Councillor Price. Why has there been no opportunity for local councillors to have input into the temporary traffic management arrangements, which are as ever riddled with inexplicable plans? Isn't it the job of his contract management team to ensure that the interests of councillors and their residents are included in such arrangements? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Jeff, I, 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 think, I think you deserve better than a, um, a written reply, so I'll read it out and yeah, I'm happy to give it to you after. But I'll read it out for the record also, Jeff. Um, the, the works to upgrade the traffic signals around Coppins Gyratory are part of the original PFI requirements planned for delivery in the initial seven year investment period. These works were delayed from the original delivery date in 2018 stroke 19, so as to not add additional disruption alongside the delivery of larger schemes at St Mary's and St George's Way. These works were therefore scheduled for delivery as soon as possible after the completion of the St George's Way scheme. Timing of the work was considered the most appropriate 
as this avoided the peak visitor traffic period and was also planned that no works would take place either side of the Christmas break. In this case, that was two weeks either side. The planned commencement on the 25th of October involved working at night on areas where it was possible to do so with minimal or no impact on daytime traffic. The works requiring diversions and possible lane closures would not commence until mid-November, where full road closures in the Fairley Road and Staples Road area were planned. This period provided for a consultation with ward councillor members at least four to five weeks in advance of the proposed closures. Whilst it's understood that any work in this area has potential to disrupt traffic, Island Roads have planned these works in detail, considering the traffic volume challenges and the limited options for closure and diversion. Given the above, I'm satisfied that council staff uh, and our contracts management team manage the contractor effectively in response to notification details involved in these works and ensured that local councils were informed with suitable notice prior to the road closures. Having considered the feedback from local councillors, the work programme is being revised to allow for further communications with ward councillors. The work will now commence later, but are still completed and will still be completed before the start of the visit visitor season. That's the reply, Jeff, and I'm happy to give it to you afterwards. Yeah, so, well, th thank you for that, Councillor Jordan. I, I would just say that Newport has endured considerable disruption over recent times with the St Mary's Junction and the St George's Way wide widening scheme. And what was part of all of that was plenty of notice to Newport councillors on the Isle of Wight Council and to the Community Council. Consultation with them, the opportunity to make suggestions to traffic management schemes, some of which were taken on board. That has not happened with this. We were advised, Councillor Jones Evans, who's here, obviously a member of the Cabinet, myself and Councillor Matt Price, were advised last Wednesday that they wished to brief us, Island Roads wished to brief us on this. We were given no more than 24 to 48 hours notice of that. I was the only councillor able to attend that. I also happened to be the chair of the community council. Uh, as you know, you were there. I participated briefly whilst I was bombarded with information about schemes that were about to start very soon. There was no opportunity to, to go back, to discuss with other colleagues, to discuss with my community council. This is not what I expect from a transparent, and accountable council. I hope that all of this will be put back behind Christmas and New Year, a crucial period for retail in the county town, that there will be an opportunity for a full briefing for the community council and Isle of Wight Newport councillors, where they can give their views and hopefully have any concerns taken into account. By the sounds of it, I've no idea how long this programme is, Hopefully you can then start, it's a shame that we have to do it, but there we go. Hopefully you can then still fit it within this financial year. Thank you, Chair. Councillor James Evans. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jordan, for um, the update, because it is really important that um, the local communities are, are cited on this. And as Councillor Brodie said, you know, we were very... Um, I think very supportive and helpful um, to the St Mary's and the St George's widening schemes as well. And this this one is it may just seem oh, just to replace some traffic lights, but actually is quite important. Um, the scheduling of it is really, really important. You know, we've got our Christmas switch on the 20th of November. We're investing very many thousands of pounds in that. Small business Saturdays on the 6th of December. So Christmas kind of starts a little bit earlier. So I'm really pleased to hear that this is going to be um, put sh shunted um, a bit more, bit more forward. And um, you know, and as in ride, you know, we've got shaping Newport, the shaping ride. These are really important partnerships. 
and I think maybe it might be worthwhile sticking some posters up at up at St. Tom, up at um, um, the up at St. Cross, you know, to say about these organisations and maybe get them to the forums again. It's really, really important because you can really, you know, as you know, as Mr. Rowan will know, um, how we work with the, with the taxi drivers just to, and that was a really, it worked out well in the end, didn't it? You know, that's because of our local knowledge. So we're here to work alongside to make sure these schemes um, happen and are, and are done smoothly, basically. So really, really appreciate what you just said just now, Councillor Jordan. Thank you. Okay. Um, if that's, did you want to come back? <laughs> okay. I think we're, we're suitably frozen now. Um, poor Sarah, I can see the goosebumps all over where she's where she is absolutely, we're so cold where we're trying to keep ourselves um, as germ-free as possible. Thank you all very much for your perseverance. If my husband's there, get my slippers ready and a cup of tea. Um, thank you all very much, and I will uh, speak to you um, and see you all shortly. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.